Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. Today, I have two afterlife spirits we're going to have conversation with and we're going to talk about a topic. The topic, this is a little different than I've done before, but I've also spoken with these two spirits before. So the topic today is going to be about abundance and prosperity. I want to learn more about that. And these two individuals have shared a little bit about that with me in their previous channeling sessions. So first we have Dr. Wayne Dyer from The Afterlife. And then we also have his friend in human form and then in The Afterlife as well. They have a great bond, uh, Luis Hay. And so these two have very different energies when I've connected with them. I really liked Louise Hayes' energy. Like she's the kind of person that if she was going to teach you something, she was going to be the one that you were going to learn from. That the energy of that feels so positive and there's just such an openness to the material, the content, the context that I just want to know more. And I, I feel just really engaged, like kind of drawn into that energy of her as a teacher. And I didn't really follow her personal work at all in the human life. I just know that she owned Hay House Publishing and I have a lot of respect for her and that she started that, that publishing company because there wasn't a lot of options for people and she just really such an advocate. And I just love that strong woman energy. So, but she's so... It's so gentle and informative, so I love her style. Now, Dr. Wayne Dyer, a little bit different vibe. He feels much more collegiate. I feel like when I'm talking to him, I have to really learn, and I'm like, I feel pressure to like really make the connections kind of thing, like like a college professor, like I'm in a college class, and, and it's like almost like law school, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to figure this out. I'm gonna get called on. I have to know this, this case, and uh, you know, the opinions of each justice kind of thing. Like, I feel like that, like he feels much more opinionated to me. And in human life, I did have the opportunity to see him in person and um, listen to him talk. And and I've listened to some of his, um, I've listened to, I think it was Wishes Fulfilled, an audio book. I actually did a small group club facilitation for Excuses Be Gone. That's a good book. And then I watched his PBS special. I think it was Wishes Fulfilled was the PBS special too. I'm not sure. Um, he has great content, but it's really, it feels like structured, which is kind of a good thing, I guess, to for the mind to follow. But it feels really kind of intellectual, ego mind kind of thing. Like you need to do this, you need to do this. And I don't like that kind of pressure. So I have to kind of balance, which is why both Dr. Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay are both here and present. So thank you. Let's talk about abundance. Now, abundance oftentimes is associated with money and uh, everyone pretty much, that's the first thing I think of is money and who doesn't want more of that? And I think of law of attraction and the work of Esther Hicks and Abraham. I'm channeling about law of attraction and I know both of you are very familiar with that. So I'd love to have a conversation around abundance and let's, let's just, let's talk about what in the context of human life and afterlife, what are the different perspectives of abundance? If we could just talk about that. And it was really nice. Wayne just kind of went like this to Louise. Would you want to start with that? Since she likes you better. <laughs> hey, I am truthful. He says, hey, you know, I, I wouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> okay. And Louise says, yes, I, I will start. I think that the closest thing to abundance in vibrational form is love. And don't we all want that? As humans, that's the one thing you struggle with the most. I know I sure did, is love and that soul love, which many refer to as self-love. And abundance in the context of spirit is most certainly that connection of love and knowing that there is an infinite amount of love. There is no context of amount in the afterlife. The context is more of a, a circular movement, a flow of energy. And that is the key to abundance. And so if one wants to pursue this topic, this knowing of abundance in the human life experience, you must must work on the mastery of the love, the love within the soul, 
first. And that is through relationship. There must be a relationship with oneself, with that spirit inside of you. And through that portal, there is an enormous gateway to the universe, to the abundance of the universe, to the concepts and context that would just blow your mind, Bridget. It would blow your mind. Well, that is, that is wonderful. And her energy comes through and it makes me want to cry. So let's feel our heart chakra, everybody. Hold on to your heart space. Just breathe in the vibration of the energy of the connection for what Luis has just shared with us about abundance and the power of the love and the connection with our spirit. Oh, thank you so much, Louise. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that energy. The goal when I do these channels is to be able to bring forward and bring through the energy vibration of the messages, not just the physical word. And so this is what it's about. Thank you. Thank you for that. Wow, what an opening. Now, okay, Dr. Dyer, what you got? <laughs> he pulls out a book, he opens up a book, and he's like, okay, let me look here. I'm looking for some citations, some resources. He's making fun of me because I was teasing him about being so collegiate. He's like, no, he sets it aside. So tell us, um, I would love to know, I would like to learn from you about abundance. And if, Wayne, if you could share with us that perspective of abundance from the afterlife perspective and from the human perspective, like, what do you know now? What do you know now, now that you are here in this spirit, pure spirit form? And he says, it's great. I wouldn't have it any other way. He said, I didn't realize how confining the body was until I accessed this, this so tell me about the abundance. How how does being spirit feel abundant to you? Like what and help help our say some stuff that our brains can understand reflecting back on the human experience to understand this, you know, to apply this. Swimming in the ocean, like he's showing me, like okay, so I'm watching the movie of him um in the ocean, diving in the ocean and swimming in the ocean. And he did share about that lots of times. If you followed his work, he talked about swimming every day in the ocean and and uh, going for a run or going for a walk on the beach and just being in the ocean. So he says to me, okay, so he's communicating. Actually, I'm getting at my solar plexus. So solar plexus is your spirit chakra right at your belly button. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna touch that on my tummy, just right at my belly button. I invite you to do the same. And visualize the image of the ocean and the ocean waves. He says, um, he's acknowledging that I want to share the energy. And so too, this is why he's showing it to me in visual form because I'm clairvoyant. I really see, visualize the ocean, everyone. See the waves. See the gorgeous white capped waves and the rhythm of that as it pulls out to become more one, more part of the greater good of the expansion of the community of the water in the ocean and breathe that in and imagine as you are like a dolphin just swimming through those waves and crashing through the white caps and going down into the below the lower levels of the water where it's just soothing and it's peaceful and there's no need to think about air or breathing, it is a natural flowing element. You are in the ocean encompassed by that water. It is all around you, it is surrounding you. He's sharing the story. He's projecting it right into my solar plexus. So please receive in your solar plexus. Focus on your exhale if you need to release, if your body has tension to be able to really receive. Just, just soften the tummy, okay? And the imagery of the ocean and the, the waves and the, I'm not even at the shore, I'm just in the water and I'm not afraid and I, my head almost feels a little like not, like it's not motion, but it's kind of a vibrant energy, vibrancy. Abundance is like this. It is like this. You are one with the water. You are the water. You are all of it. Not one wave, not one 
crash into the shore and then pulling it back and then crashing into the shore and pulling it back. You are not the one wave. The wave is never one the same. There is an abundance of, of transformation that occurs again and again and again and again. And the wave is different every moment that it is forming the cusp and crashing, curling under into itself and then back into the water and then it hits and it spreads out and it expands. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and I'm putting my arms out really wide and bigger and bigger and then comes back in and kind of trickles back into its source, becoming one with the wholeness, becoming one, becoming one. This is what abundance feels like. This is what it feels like as a spirit. And this is the co-creation using the nature element, the water element in this, in this vision that you have seen that I have projected to your solar plexus. This is the closest thing to feeling that, to knowing that in human experience is the water. And you don't, I don't, you guys, I don't think you have to be going swimming in the ocean to get this vibe, okay? You can walk by the water, you can go to the river, you can sit at the lake shore, you can take a bath, you can take a shower, whatever. You can listen to audio of the ocean, of the ocean. You can walk, you can look that stuff up on YouTube, people. You can see hours, three hours worth of just water crashing into the, uh, coming into the ocean and not crashing, but just reaching, white capping and curling under and reaching into the ocean and coming back. It. It's like a rocking motion almost. It's really beautiful. Lots of different variations. So lots of different variations. Was, this is beautiful. Thank you, Dr. Dyer. Is there anything specific or any kind of advice you would give to us as humans about abundance, particularly related to money? Let's talk about finances. Let's talk about money because that's a real thing. People have to deal with that. He says, don't I know it? I had eight kids. I know there's pressure. He says there's a lot of pressure to perform and to produce and financially I recognize that there's a lot of pressure. I he says I felt that as a person too up until the last 10 years or so of my life. Then it wasn't as intense. Maybe 8 to 10 years. He said then it wasn't as intense. I know, I understand what that's like. So give us some advice. He says don't spend more than you can afford. <laughs> It's kind of like he's talking about, and he says, banking on your future. He says, there's a difference in believing in yourself and visioning for your future and creating your future. There's a difference in that and investing in your future energetically and then putting out the assets, the resource, signing over your house to start a business. He says, I recognize that there's a cost, ri cost risk assessment that needs to be done and for some people that's they thrive on that kind of energy that's just like adrenaline to them i'm going to i'm going to gamble everything to start a business and he says the truth is not many businesses are successful and when they are it takes a really long time and he says i'm not saying that to be a downer he says i'm saying that because that's the truth of what it's like to be a person Everyone has dreams and desires, and it's, it's a good part of being a person to have that. It inspires you. It gives you momentum and motivation. But he says, not everybody is going to make their passion, their dream, their financial sustainability is not going to come from that passion or that dream. But their happiness, their fulfillment, their connection to their God, their creator, their source, their themselves, their soul inside of them, that comes from the pursuit of the dream, the vision of the dream, the getting the opportunities to experience the things that you desire to experience. But that doesn't, that is not the exact same thing as getting paid. And I know that you do, probably don't want to hear that. You have to have a job. Sometimes you have to have a job because it pays the bills. And you've got to pay bills because that's part of being a person. If you want a decent roof over your head and a car to drive and you want food on the table for your kids, you got to do that. But that's not the same thing. People tend to confuse the basic need of 
financial money with your spirituality, your personal growth, your pursuit of your dreams. It is not the same thing. It isn't. Most, he said I should say most, more often than not, it's not the same thing. There are anomalies. There are people that are lucky enough and in the right flow state of this is their incarnation to really be that, you know, really successful public figure or really, you know, master teacher or really successful business. They have a great idea and their business takes off and that does happen. But you cannot bank on that. Don't bank on the future. Don't. The financial prosperity for you is in the present and traditional methods of having a job or working in a career even if it's not what you love, it, it doesn't have to be what you love. But what you love and what you desire, what you dream of, has to be fulfilling enough to support you when you're doing the other things. Like you got a house, you got to clean your house. You don't want to clean your house, but you got to clean your house. Nobody wants to clean the toilets, but you got to clean the toilets. So everybody cleans the toilets. And it's the same with work. You have to, in many cases, do some kind of work and and you can be an entrepreneur and you can have different jobs and different ways to bring in income and just have a a whole a whole different set of streams of income and flow of income and that gives you the money that you need to provide for the human needs but money is not it is not a spiritual guarantee it is not connected to your purpose but it is a necessity that is the thing I think that most humans get mixed up. They think that money isn't spiritual. And because money isn't spiritual, then they can't make money doing spiritual things or following their life purpose or following their dreams. But they can, they can make money, but they may not be able to make all of the money that they need or want or desire in that one area. Because, because you are a human person, and a spiritual being. You must have the money piece, the prosperity piece, the abundance piece in both areas. In the human area, it looks like money. Sometimes it looks like health, wellness, vitality. In the spiritual energy, it can look like vitality, wellness. It can also look like a large community of people or an, an invitation to speak or a book, or a, a partnership. It can look like a whole host of things, but it's not traditionally something that, a book, if you've read any of my work, or if you've heard, Bridget, I know you know the story, about me, I bought all my books, my first books, The Erroneous Zones. I bought all my books, as many as I could, so that they would sell out and then I would have them and then I'd be able to hand them out when I'd go to these radio stations on tour, my own tour, my own book tour, because the book company didn't do that at the time. And I'm just a new guy and nobody knows what I'm talking about. And so I did it. So you can't, it's not like I, you can make a bunch of money on a book, but a book is a spiritual or a extension of a form of abundance in the connection to your purpose, which purpose is not money. Money and purpose is not the same thing. This is where the confusion happens. Money and job and purpose, they're not all the same thing. It doesn't mean that you can't have a job that has purpose and you make money. You can, you absolutely can. But do not wait for, or wait to be happy and fulfilled to pursue your dreams until you have a job that you love that is connected to your purpose because your job may never be connected to your purpose. Your purpose may be some other source of revenue, income, or some other source of fulfillment. Fulfillment in the spiritual context is more about the inputs, the receiving, the, the connection that gives you what you need so that you can work a job that maybe isn't as purposeful or meaningful as you'd like it to be, but you're so fulfilled in your spiritual energetic spaces of your purpose and your visions and your dreams that you can do the job well. 
and you can influence the people around you and you can enjoy yourself as best you can and you don't have to hate that and feel like you have to do that just until one day you get discovered or one day you get that, you know, you know, a product placement or product, you get a request to promote a product and all of a sudden you have tons of money. It's not, it's not like that. That's not how it works. So stop, stop that. That is way too much pressure. That is a huge misunderstanding. Okay, Wayne, that is huge. That, like my whole solar plexus just went like a pop bottle. Like, okay, okay, you, your job may not be your purpose, but you can bring the energy of your fullness, your wholeness, connected to your purpose, your dreams and desires into your work because of who you are is this, your spirit goes to work, goes to the job. Even if you don't love the job, the job doesn't have to be so purposeful and you get paid and you're like, yeah, it doesn't always happen that way. I get it. I, I understand what you're saying. And so you don't have to choose one or the other. I'm just going to be spiritual or I'm just going to be a person. I just have to deal with the daily grind. I just have to go work my job at Target or sit in the back accounting office and know the boss is a ding dong, you know. I mean, I know all of these things are... In, are, are real life things that people have. But from what you're seeing, if we allow ourselves to be so fulfilled by our dreams, our visions, our purpose, and we can do that and experience that and connect to that as much as we can, and then that gives us an abundance of energy and a feeling, the feeling that we're seeking anyway and trying to fulfill a purpose and make the purpose our job, it's kind of a waste of time in most cases. Sometimes we can merge the two and integrate them, but the reality is, is we're the ones that are merged and integrated because we're the whole. And our spiritual stuff, our positive inputs, whatever TED Talks you watch or books you read or inspiring uh, classes you take online or, or uh, workshops you attend, just all oh, promote, promote, promote your energy of abundance so that when you then go to your work and you have interactions in your office and you, you know, you have to do things that maybe aren't as enjoyable. You can still do them and you can do them in a way that it doesn't drag you down, right? I mean, is that what you're saying? He says, well, in part, yeah, yes. In part, yes. People have got to stop confusing money and purpose. Money and purpose are not the same thing. Okay. But it doesn't mean, mm, he's like, Clarify. He says, clarify, Bridget. Clarify. It doesn't mean, also I'm going to speak for Mr. Dyer. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. It doesn't mean, though, okay, money and purpose are not the same thing. It doesn't mean, though, it does not mean that you can't make money pursuing your life purpose because you can. But it may not be the only source of income you have. It may not be the one stream of income you have. It may not be the be all end all. So stop waiting for that to be the case because it's just assume it's not. And when the, if the opportunity arises to integrate everything, great, but you're the integration. So money and purpose, not the same thing, not the same, stop connecting them. Not the same thing, not the same thing. Think about that, think about that. And you don't have to choose one or the other. It's not a choice of, oh, either I'm gonna have money or I'm gonna live my life spiritually and on purpose. No, you don't choose one or the other. You're both, you're a person and your spirit. You're both, you're both. And your spirit is with you all the time, all the time. <laughs> all right, any closing remarks, uh, Louise? I think what Wayne brought up was very fascinating that money is not your purpose. Bridget, I think you should spend some time with this and I think you should perhaps do some more follow-up, some more work around this topic. Maybe you could do a live stream. Maybe you could do one of your Facebook streams about this topic and to continue. I encourage all of you to continue to pursue this, to think about what this means for you and maybe to um, untangle some of the places where these two things were connected and they don't need to be. But that's not to say that you wouldn't be pleasantly surprised or open to receiving abundance from the universe in unusual places and in the form of money and financial support and prosperity, because that is always possible. That is always possible in this limit, limitless universe that we exist in. And your human body is part of that. You're a human being 
is part of that. And so you too can receive the abundance in the form of the tangible forms of money. You most certainly can receive that. Thank you. Thank you. Her energy just feels really good. Thank you. This is, my mind is kind of blown right now. I want to listen back to this, watch it, and allow it to kind of just simmer for me. Let myself think about it. I'd encourage you also to, if you journal, go ahead and journal about this. Even if you don't, maybe you should write down some thoughts or ideas about this or revisit this topic tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and ask yourself about that concept of money and purpose and uh, see where it goes for you. See how it opens up for you. This is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Remember, the goal of this channel is to really inspire your spirit, to fill you up with hope and to motivate you. After all, it's your life, so live it. Be sure to share this video with others you think will benefit. Make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that red bell to be notified of future weekly channels and new videos. Thanks for being here.